Speaking of nutrition, we have seen that how green plants are able to make their own food. So that is the materials, the simple materials like carbon dioxide and water which are present in the environment are taken up and with the help of chlorophyll using the sun energy that is the light energy these materials are converted to a substance called as glucose primarily glucose which is the major source of energy even for the plant and even for the other animals heterotrophs which depend on plants so this glucose when it is prepared in large amounts it is stored in the form of a starch starch so Plants or the autotrophic organisms, they are able to make the materials required for their maintenance or survival. So they can prepare these materials on their own. But are these two materials sufficient for the growth of the plant? A plant has to grow, not only meeting its energy requirements. So apart from the energy requirement, there are another requirements. Even plant has to repair its tissues. Even the plants, they have to grow, they should flower, they should produce fruits and seeds so by that they can reproduce. So to make the new parts and cells, apart from these glucose and starch, some other materials and molecules are required by plants. So plants, they need proteins. Plants, they have to make proteins in their body, amino acids in their bodies and fats in their bodies. How these new molecules are prepared. So to make proteins, nitrogen is required because to make carbohydrates, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, these are enough. These are present. Hydrogen and oxygen is present in water and this is present in carbon dioxide. Carbon is present in carbon dioxide. So plant is getting carbon, hydrogen, oxygen from carbon dioxide and water. But to make proteins, what is required? Nitrogen is required. So where is the nitrogen? Nitrogen is present in the atmosphere. Air has got lot of nitrogen. 78% of air is nitrogen. So can the plant directly breathe in the nitrogen from the atmosphere through its tomato? No, it is not possible. Plants cannot breathe nitrogen. They cannot use the nitrogen in gaseous form which is in the air. So the nitrogen present in the air cannot be taken by the plants. So what do they do? How do they meet their nitrogen requirements? A apart from the nitrogen, they need other materials, other elements like phosphorus, sulfur, zinc. From where do they get these materials? So plants, they get water from the soil, they absorb through the roots, they get carbon dioxide from the air through the stomata. The plants also get nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, zinc and other kind of mineral salts which are required for the formation of new molecules like proteins, amino acids, vitamins and different materials to make their new cells for the growth. They get all these minerals from the soil. So soil is the source of all these minerals to the plants. So from where do these uh, minerals come to the soil? Especially nitrogen, it is the most important mineral needed for the growth of the plant, from where does this nitrogen comes to the soil? So nitrogen, it reaches the soil. The nitrogen which is present in the air, it comes to the soil by different processes, by that physical process like lightening and by the biological process like nitrogen fixing bacteria. So the plants, they may use the inorganic nitrites and nitrates present in the soil or the nitrogenous compounds that are formed by the bacteria, nitrogen fixing bacteria present in the soil. So in this way, the atmospheric nitrogen is fixed into the soil. So these nitrogenous compounds are taken up by the plant, uh, that is along with the water from the root. So these minerals are supplied to different parts and uh, by mixing these nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur and all these things to the primary material, glucose and starch, several biochemical reactions takes place and a variety of biomolecules are formed in the plant's body. So these Biomolecules are used for its repair, for its growth, for the formation of flowers, fruits and different different things. So in this way, the autotrophic nutrition, it helps the plants to get to meet the requirement of molecules needed for the maintenance of life and for the growth and development of the autotrophic organisms. 
Now let us look at the heterotrophic nutrition. This is the another mode of nutrition in which the organisms they depend on other organisms for their food requirements, for their energy requirements. Let us see how. So again in this heterotrophic nutrition, here the mode of nutrition of an organism, it depends upon the type of the food and availability of the food. So how is that? What type of food it is and how it is available? For example, you see certain foods are stationary. Means the food of cow is stationary. It is grass. It stays still there on the land. So the cow has to go and eat the grass, even the goat. But whereas in some cases, the food is mobile. That means it moves. The animal has to hunt it. The animal has to catch it. Say for example, lion or tiger. It has to hunt its food because the food is running. So in this way, the way it obtains the food is different depending upon the type of food and availability of the food. And these organisms, they have different strategies in the mode of their nutrition. Certain organisms, they break down the food outside their bodies or they may take the food which is broken, being broken down and they use the nutrients. But certain organisms, they take the food into their bodies first, then they digest the food like us. We eat the food, later we digest it. So the organisms which feed on the food which is being broken down are called as saprophytes and the mode of nutrition is called as saprophytic. Saprophytes are also a part of heterotrophs. So the saprophytic nutrition is also a part of heterotrophic nutrition. What does this saprophytic nutrition means? It means if the organisms are feeding on the organism which is already died and broken down, being broken down. For example, we see that mold, fungus, all kind of fungus, mold, bread molds, mushrooms. So what are these? These are a kind of fungus. What does this fungus do? Fungus, it cannot prepare its own food. So it is not an autotroph. It depends on other organisms for the food. It cannot eat the organism and digest it. It is not having the complex system and structure to digest the food. So what does it do? It is feeding on the decaying matter. That means, for example, a rotten wooden log. A wooden log is being rotten in the wet rain. So after the rain, uh, the bark of the wooden log becomes rotten. So at this time, the nutrients are readily available. So by that, these molds grow. In the same way, uh, any organism is died. After the organism is dead, it is fed by a lot of different uh, bacteria and fungus. So the fungus, it feeds on the decaying matter. Such kind of, such mode of nutrition is called as saprophytic mode of nutrition and such organisms are called as saprophytes. So here, the breakdown of the food takes place outside the body. They cannot break down the food inside their bodies. They don't have any structures. They don't have any special enzymes to do the job. So that is saprophytic. What is the other case? See, animals like cat, dog, we the human beings, birds, and reptiles, many of these animals, they eat the food. So after eating the food, the food is digested in their stomach with the help of certain chemicals called as enzymes. So with the help of enzymes, the food is digested, that is converted into complex form to simple form. So these simple nutrients are absorbed into the blood, supplied to the cells and helps for the maintenance, growth and various activities of the organisms. So that is breakdown of food inside the body example humans and all the other higher animals we also find one more kind of nutrition here that is parasitic mode of nutrition this also comes under the heterotrophic mode of nutrition but here the organisms they do not kill the other organism just they feed on it here in this case we can find certain plants also under this heterotrophic nutrition but basically here we are talking about this uh, animals which eat the other animals or which may eat the other plants. So here in this parasitic mode of nutrition, we see parasitic plants and parasitic animals. Under the parasitic plants, you see that um, we can take that cascuta. Cascuta is a plant which is having a special structure called as hastoria by which it sucks the juices from other plants and it feeds on the other plants. 
so it is dependent on the other plants for the nutrients but it is not killing the other plant so that is what an example for the parasitic plant and parasitic mode of nutrition which comes under heterotrophic nutrition and the other animals that come under this parasitic nutrition are leech leech it feed on the blood of animal it does not kill even the ticks or mites ticks or mites and uh, we can say that mosquitoes so these are the examples of the parasitic organism so we see these different kinds of uh, modes of nutrition under heterotrophic nutrition so that is saprophytic mode of nutrition where the organisms are dependent on decaying matter and parasitic mode of nutrition where the organisms do not kill the other organism but feed on them just they live on them and get the materials from them so this is about the heterotrophic nutrition now let us see the heterotrophic nutrition in humans if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus